What is going on, guys? It is Nick here with Nick's Topics, back with another Walking Dead What If Topic video. And today, we got a topic concerning pretty much the main character of the series, and a topic that could have possibly been brought up, almost unlikely. What if Rick was saved by the Reapers instead of Jadis? Now, from you guys reading the title and hearing what just came out of my mouth, I bet you're wondering... Why would the Reapers ever save someone? See, here's how the story came to be. I'll explain a little before we get into it. Basically, I had been thinking about a topic concerning Rick because I was kind of running out of ideas at the moment. And I thought about Rick getting saved by another group in Season 9 besides Jadis for her trading him to get into the CRM. Um, and... At first, I thought, and you guys are going to agree with me on this one, the Whisperers saving him, but that would absolutely never happen any way, shape, or form because Alpha wouldn't even bother. He would see him as a letdown, a weakling, pretty much useless. So, my next idea was the Commonwealth. And I think I'm going to do that in the next video, question mark. Um, but that would have to be after a what if once again recommended to me. I'll shout it out in a future video, but I'm not going to get too into it until like the end of the video. But yeah, my first idea and like the only major groups that would be left would be like the Reapers. So I figured I would go with that idea. And yeah, we'll see where it takes us. So let's dive in. We open up right whenever Rick shoots down the bridge and everybody thinks that he is dead. I don't know why in that part everyone didn't just go looking to see if he somehow was alive. I get that it was Andrew Lincoln's exit of the series, but it would have made more sense rather than just seeing if he was dead. Um, but you know what? I'm not going to get into that. But this time, whenever he blows up the bridge, Jadis is cl still close to the area, but she doesn't get to him before the Reapers do. The Reapers are actually close in that area at the time, and they go and save him. Jadis is snuck up on by one of the Reapers and is abruptly killed. And what about the helicopter, you might ask? Well, that gets taken down rather easily by all the Reapers, because I'm sure besides melee weapons, they would have had a smarter tactic on how to take that helicopter down too, because they would have seen it. I don't think that they would just have let it gotten away or gone down. I'm sure the helicopter guy didn't even care about Jadis. The guy in the helicopter was already skeptical as to like her tricks and everything else too. He even stated it himself right before she asked if she could save Rick. But yeah, the Reapers kill Jadis and they're the ones who save Rick instead. None of the other people in the group suspecting anything because like I said, at that time they had thought he was dead. So yeah, after the Reapers find Rick almost dead, they bring him to the base and Rick is introduced to all the Reapers, and then Pope, the leader, asks the whole deal about, like... Well, first he's patched up, obviously, because he was near death. And after a few uh, weeks or months of this, Rick has finally recovered. Pope tests him. Rick joins the Reapers because, you know, he's pretty much the most, like... Um, enduring, if not able-bodied person, even though at that time in the series he was getting old. But yeah, he passes the test, he's asked the whole shmeal about if he believes in God and stuff like that. I definitely think Rick would say no on that one. <laughs> he would say about his family, and that he wanted to get back to them, but he said, Pope basically tells him that since they saved him, if... Those people may be a threat to them, so it's best that Rick just stays with them because he pretty much owes their his life to them because they rescued him. And Rick agrees to this for now. 
Rick is also taught better combat skills, of course, by Carver, pretty much the most skilled fighter there. Now, you guys might be asking, or you might already be thinking, is Leah there with the Reapers yet? Well, no. Because, if you guys remember in a season 10 flashback, Daryl, whenever he was out looking for Rick and went off on his own for God knows how long, it was like a six year time skip. So for that period of time, he was out and Leah was also out on her own before the Reapers eventually um, got her, or not got her, but saved her since she was all by herself. So for a good amount of time, like a good long amount of time, Daryl and Leah would be around each other and Leah would not join the Reapers yet, but that would happen eventually. Now you guys might be asking, or I always say this, but it's just like a phrase for like just people having questions like in the series. It's better for me to clarify. So that's why if you guys get annoyed with me saying that, just say in the comments, but it just feels more right for me to say that, like to explain to you guys. Anyway, you guys might be wondering what happens to like the alpha uh, part of the story and that part, does that stay the same or does it change? Well, since Rick is still gone from the group, nothing would really change, honestly. So everything past that point up until season 11, whenever the Reapers actually make their entrance, would remain the same. So the Reapers would make their entrance after everything is the same in the story. Rick would also be a cloaked figure, um, which is kind of a shock to see Rick as a, like, a cloaked Reaper. But... He would have been with the group for a long time. He would have somewhat gotten used to this new like lifestyle because, again, he pretty much owes his life to that group. And the group wasn't necessarily bad to him. They were actually fairly nice. They were all like a family. Pope is a bit extreme, but they still relatively got along. He wasn't, but when he saw his group, especially Negan, out and about, he started to debate with himself whether to show his actual face. But he thought to himself, not yet. Let's see how my old family does and what they've learned. And then maybe I'll actually uncloak myself. So, yeah, that's pretty much what he does. And then everything past that point, up until the scene with Leah and the two Reapers and Carver on the ground, everything like that is the same, like I said. Up until that point, and then instead of Maggie actually shooting all of them, a voice cries out. And he abruptly says, that's enough. And he uncloaks himself, and lo and behold, it's Rick freaking Grimes killing all three in the process. So that means, like my um, Rick uh, didn't kill Shane... Um, uh, whatever part that was, I think it was like part six, I would have to say seven question mark. Uh, but anyway, Leah is not going to be a part of the story anymore, even though she didn't really play too big a part, like in the, uh, season 11, like finale almost, but still she's no longer part of the story. After this, Daryl doesn't even know, like, what to think. His best friend, his brother, after all these years, was alive. And he starts to cry, because obviously he would. And I bet that if Rick somehow does appear in the season finale, that is exactly how he w would react, or anyone would react, seeing him alive. Anyway, he um, asks Rick, like... What was that about? How are you even alive? Why are you with them? Pretty much berating with, like, questions. With, like, anger, happiness, sadness, all in once. And this would be a drastic, like, all-in-one emotion, like, change for Daryl. Even Maggie would start bawling, obviously, because she and Rick were still close. Not, like, couple close, but you know what I mean. And she would be just as upset well, not upset, but, you know, uh, broken down and sad that 
and happy that Rick was actually alive. Negan, now you guys also might be asking, since Negan is actually up and about, how would this go down between the two of them? Would Rick immediately just kill Negan? Well, I'll get to that. Negan was surprised at first, but then smiles because even though he had not seen or heard from Rick in a long time, it doesn't really shock him too much because he knew how tough Rick was and what he did to him and his savior group and all that stuff. If he was like still season nine, Negan, he probably would be a little bit more like wanting to kill him and that kind of stuff. Elijah's on the ground, battered, broken, and beaten. He doesn't know what to think. He doesn't know why these people are getting so emotional. Father Gabriel sees this, comes down, and he's just as emotional. And I'm pretty much naming, like, all the characters that were close to the event. Now, here's a big one. Does the Michonne and Virgil sequence still happen? Well, yes, but... Since Rick was with the Reapers and not taken to the CRM. She would not find his boots there. So, she would be able to come back a lot sooner. And, yeah, around that time, I think that Michonne would actually be back a with the group, like, around the time that Rick actually revealed himself. And she would be just as freaking surprised and sad. She would be just as surprised and emotional that the man that she pretty much loved was actually still alive and with the Reaper group, even though she didn't even know about them. But yeah, she would be told everything. And yeah, they would embrace and talk about like everything. Rick would basically be told like the whole story, Negan saving Judith and just being much better than he was. Rick is glad to hear that Negan is pretty much a changed man. And knows that him locking him in that cell was actually for the better. And keeping him alive was for the better. And Rick and Negan both shake hands, hug it out. Because, you know, of course he would uh, show gratitude for, like, him being a good part of the group. Also hearing about Negan killing Alpha and saving them from Alpha. So that would be good, too. And he would go back with the group. And everyone would be shocked and surprised and emotional, like I said, to know that Rick was alive. We then catch up to the part of the story where the Commonwealth appears at Alexandria. Um, and that's pretty much where the story wraps up, my friends. A few things to talk about before we uh, wrap it up here. You guys might be asking... If this is going to be a second part, will it end up being the same as when you make the finale for the What If Rick Didn't Kill Shane series? Well, no for a couple reasons. One, Carl isn't alive in this series like he is in the other one. Um, what else? Negan is dead in that story, so that changes a bunch. Rick is still around, yes, but Michonne is actually around. Because Michonne was killed in What If Rick Didn't Kill Shane, so there's a lot of changes. But, like What If Rick Didn't Kill Shane, I'm going to wait for season 11 to fully come out before I wrap up that series and this series. So this is going to be a two-parter. The finale, like I said, will wait. But I hope you guys have enjoyed um, at least hearing this story and where it went. But that's where we leave things for now. So what did you guys think? Did you enjoy where this story went? Do you think that the Reapers would have actually saved Rick? Do you think that something different could have happened than what I said? What are your thoughts? Tell me in the comments. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel. It's definitely blowing up a lot bigger than I thought it was going to. But thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. If you have any what ifs that you want to recommend me, tell me in the comments. Like the video if you enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time. Catch you later.